I was thinking about buying a CX bike. Cyclocross bike, or is it a gravel bike? Or is it a cyclocross Ooh. bike? I don't know, nobody knows. In today's episode of Bike Fit Tuesdays, we're gonna be covering the difference between a gravel bike and a cyclocross bike, because there is a difference. Won't you come on down, I said, my child. We're gonna talk about why cyclocross bikes are shit, aren't we? So this is a cyclocross, no, this isn't a cyclocross bike. They look the same to the untrained eye. Are they the same? No. What's the difference? I don't know, so you wanna tell me. we're gonna explore on today's Bike Fit Tuesdays. It is actually Tuesday. It's not gonna be Tuesday when out. Andy Corso though, will be livid. Hi Andy! Have you ever met Andy Corso? I think I rode past him once. I'm gonna talk about why cyclocross bikes are unsuitable for road or commuting usage. <laughs> can't, can't focus when you're fucking pulling that face behind your camera. This is an unwilling uh, customer's bike. Candel Cad X, great bike. Unfortunately, very, very popular in the commuting realm for all of the wrong reasons. It's a very popular uh, design of bicycle to be used for commuting, most of the fact that most manufacturers have tended to add rack and mudguard mounts as a, as a means of making them a little bit more utilitarian. The problem with a bike like this is it's geared up essentially for cyclocross. Now, I guess that doesn't really translate to being particularly appropriate for riding on the road. In order to understand why it's inappropriate, you've got to think about cyclocross racing and why cyclocross racing is different, different to road cycling. Now, the average speed on, on a cyclocross World Cup circuit is about 40 kilometers an hour. We know this because Andy and I researched it the other day when we were having an argument about why cyclocross bikes are shit. On a normal road ride, it's relatively common to be able to clock up over 60 kilometers an hour. Would you agree? The, um, just out in the normal world. What that means is that the, the geometry of a bike like this is designed uh, specifically for the purposes of riding under 40 kilometers an hour. So with that in mind, it's got a short wheelbase, the head angle is steeper, the top tube is shorter, the head tube is shorter. The whole thing is generally geared towards low speed agility than it is about high speed stability. And that's kind of where the, the gravel bike thing's gonna come in a little bit later on. You often hear the argument about them being more durable, even though they utilize road components. An FSA Gossamer crank on it, road crank. It's got Mavic Axiom wheels on it, road wheel. There's nothing more durable about this bike than there is about a road bike. The durability argument essentially goes out the window. But it kind of leaves, well, what's, what's the point of even riding one of these? In my opinion, there is. So if I do choose one of these for winter mileage, what sort of problems am I going to encounter riding it? Think about the general fundamentals of, of cyclocross geometry. It's got a short wheel base for low speed agility. It's got a tall seat tube to make the thing easier to shoulder, so it's common practice in cyclocross racing. It's got a high bottom bracket, which increases your center of gravity, mostly to reduce, to, sorry, to increase ground clearance for riding off road. I mean, cyclocross racing is essentially riding a, riding a racing bike more or less, off-road. When you put that type of bike into a different scenario where, you, where you're talking 60, 70, maybe even 80 kilometers an hour, high speed, descent for example, it, the thing's gonna feel a lot more skittish than, than you might find from a, a, a tra traditional road bike. Which kind of leads us on to talk about gravel bikes. Now, gravel bikes are the, the latest and greatest buzzword in, in road cycling, and I, I, I guess in order to talk about one, we should probably get one, right? Enter the slightly more modern humble gravel bike, this is a cheap shit one. The two bikes we've got in front of us are fundamentally they're the same size, same price. Same brand. Same brand. A lot of people online just question the difference, if there is a difference at all, between gravel and cross. There is a big difference. There's a massive difference. Which is the geometry mainly? Uh, almost exclusively. To the untrained eye, I guess, these two bikes look almost identical, but there is a fundamental difference. Of gravel bike geometry seemingly has stemmed from endurance bike geometry. So the head tubes are taller, top tubes are shorter, geometry is a little bit slacker, so we're talking like 71 and a half degree head angle on, a, on, on an average size bike. But then it's got a little bit more tire clearance, tends to have disc brakes, all of this kind of stuff, which, which actually makes it incredibly well suited to British winter, winter riding conditions. You've got the ability to take like a 45C tire, you put a fender on it, sorry I'm starting to sound American, uh, you can put a mud guard on it, it'll take a rack as well. So, and, and again, we're also starting to see gravel specific products whereas if you go back maybe five years before the whole gravel craze started uh, all the cyclocross bikes and products were still using road components it's, it's only now that we're starting to see gravel specific components i mean even shimano has launched a gravel specific transmission in the name of grx 
uh, but we're seeing gravel specific wheels, head tubes are more oversized, but yet it still takes inspiration from, from road bikes. You know, the, high, you know, the wheelbase is, is similar length, slightly longer, so actually very good for high speed stability. This is the perfect bike for winter plodding. You know, it's rather apt that we're talking about this when, uh, you know, in the middle of the British winter time, but you know, bigger tires, mudguard clearances, generally geared towards better durability, in my opinion, it's the perfect, perfect bike. As a bike fitter, do you find that gravel bikes tend to fit people quite well because yes. of the, uh, the high head tubes? Absolutely. There are exceptions to the rule. Namely, the open unbeaten path. It's like a Pinarello dogma, <laughs> really aggressive. I mean, I, I can tolerate a reasonable position, but I end up with like 30 mil of spaces underneath my stem on my open. It wasn't really the right, the right bike for, for our Vietnam trip. I don't think I'd bike pack on one again. So there you go. If you're looking for a winter bike, gravel bike, over cross bike, nearly always the better choice because of the geometry. As always with Bike Fit Tuesdays, I'll put the link down below to James's website if you want to book a fit with him. If you have any other suggestions of topics that you want us to cover, put it in the comments down below and we'll do our best. Any questions, put them down in the comments and we'll do our best to answer them. It's weird you can see us in the, in the screen. No? Aww, but let me do it for one. Oh.